The recent coup in Niger has sent shockwaves throughout the Sahel region, raising concerns about its impact on peace, stability, and international interests. In this video, I delve into the underlying factors that led to the coup, explore the leaders behind it, and examine the potential global consequences. But there are some questions that we need to answer. Why a large percentage of people are in support of the winter? I have answers to that question. I will also analyze the threats posed to the French interests, the possibility of escalation into conflict, and the role of regional organizations in addressing the military power seizures in the region. But first, we need to understand the triggers. The coup in Niger was catalyzed by a mixture of factors, some notably rising insecurity and economic stagnation, insurgent attacks by groups such as Al-Qaeda, Islamic State affiliates, and Boko Haram, which have led thousands of deaths and displacements. Despite the presence of foreign forces, particularly from the US and France, these attacks have persisted, fostering a perception among citizens that external intervention isn't effectively addressing the security crisis. The July coup was further influenced by ethnic tensions within the military and the perceived foreign origins of President Mohamed Bazoum. So as we try to understand the triggers of the coup, one major factor cannot be left out. That is the economic stagnation in Niger. And this is partly why the large percentage of the people are in support of the winter. According to the World Population Review Report of 2023, Niger is ranked sixth among the 10 poorest countries in the world. Two out of three residents live below the poverty line, and more than 40% of the population earns less than $1 a day. Niger's economy relies on agriculture, as it accounts for 40% of the GDP and provides an occupation for nearly 80% of the population. The majority of the government's budget comes from foreign aid, but the country is very rich in natural resources. Then why are its people very poor? Niger's resources include uranium, coal, gold, iron, tin, phosphates, petroleum, salt, etc. Niger has some of the largest uranium reserves in the world. It also has a very good amount of oil reserves. In 2023, Niger is the seventh largest producer of uranium in the world, and that accounts for about 5% of the world's total production. Niger's valuable materials like uranium are sent to countries they used to control it like France. France then uses this uranium to power its nuclear plants. This benefits the French energy industry, which sells electricity to other countries and makes billions of dollars, some of which is given back to Niger as aid. This isn't just an idea. This is really happening. France makes about $3.3 billion each year from selling electricity. Niger, which gives France about 18% of its uranium and supplies 5% of the world's uranium, stays poor, so people there feel frustrated about this. The situation with Niger's uranium is just one example. Many of other resources in the countries that were once colonies are still being used without fair benefits. This situation could explain why people in other countries in the region like Mali and Burkina Faso have negative feelings towards France. The history of exploitation is like a wound that never healed, and some leaders use this anger to gain popularity, which is exactly what the military wound has done. That's why we saw thousands of people rallying in support of Niger's ruling winter in the capital when the army took over. Number two, we need to understand the ethnicity factor in the country. Initially, there was a discussion about where President Mohamed Bazoum comes from and if he's really from Niger. This was talked about a lot before the last election. President Bazoum is part of a smaller ethnic group of people in Niger called the ethnic Arab minority. Some thought he came from another country. The army in Niger mostly consists of the large ethnic groups of people. Even though President Bazoum got around 56% of the votes in the election and is in the same party as the previous president, Mohamed Isufu, some people in the army did not like that he's from a different ethnic group. In Niger, people care a lot about the different ethnic groups in the army. This was something that helped Isufu be president for two terms. When it comes to choosing people for important and influential positions in the army, they often pick best on which ethnic group someone is from. Another factor that caused the coup is the foreign 
presence in the region. The army is not happy about having many soldiers and bases from other countries in their own country. They feel like this makes them weaker. Niger is a good friend of Western countries and helps them fight insurgency in the region. France has also invested largely in Niger mines, another reason for its interest in security. In 2019, despite protests, the US opened a drone base in Niger. People didn't like that. The base could make Niger a target for terrorists and make things more unsafe. In 2022, France and other European friends took their soldiers from Mali, the country next to Niger. The president of Niger, Mohamed Bazoum, quickly asked them to come to Niger instead. But most influential people in the army and the country denounced the increase in foreign forces, saying that while it was intended to enhance stability, it led to accusations of undermining national sovereignty. Another factor that catalyzed the coup was the weakness of the regional bodies, and until today, it is still showing. They gave a deadline to the Wunta and nothing was done when the Wunta did not respond. So weakness of regional bodies. The failure for regional organizations such as the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, and the African Union to respond effectively to previous military takeovers in the region created an atmosphere that emboldened the Nigerian military. Multiple successful coups within the last four years coupled with absence of substantial deterrence mechanisms have set have set a precedent that opportunistic military leaders may exploit. ECOWAS's threat of force in the aftermath of the coup reflects a commitment to restoring constitutional order, but the effectiveness of such measures remains to be seen. Briefly, I'll conclude with the impact, the coup's impact for Niger and the region. The coup has big effects on Niger and the whole Sahel region. Niger is a strong friend of Western countries, especially France and the US and the European Union when it comes to fighting insurgency and stopping illegal immigrations to Europe. The work to solve these problems will be affected. The new military leaders will likely use these problems as a way to bargain in talks and make people accept the new government. The new leaders in Niger might also cooperate with the Wagner group to fight against the extremist groups. The leader has already praised them for taking control. We might see Russia's influence and the Wagner group's influence might grow in the region. But the Wagner group has not been able to stop terrorists from getting stronger in Mali and Burkina Faso. Lastly, the military takes control successfully in Niger, it would be a big step back for democracy in the area and all of Africa. The military government in, in Guinea, Mali and Burkina Faso are already planning to create a military alliance to deal with the insecurity. So African leaders, especially ECOWAS, need to take more actions to demonstrate their commitment to serving the people. As they engage with the ruling military group, they must also tackle the issue of extreme poverty in the nation that possesses abundant natural resources.